Welcome back to the Malted Man Cave. I'm Keith. I'm Dave. And tonight we're going to be doing a very famous rye whiskey. Go back. Alright, so we're back. And as I said, tonight we're going to be doing a very famous, well-known, not super expensive, but just very well thought of mm -hmm. rye whiskey. We're going to be doing Rittenhouse Rye. Comes in at 50% ABV, and as you love, bottled in bond. Um, not sure about it, if it's chill filtered or not, and that is with all rye and bourbons, it is not colored. Not colored. Have you heard of Rittenhouse Rye before? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't. When you said... We're gonna do do something that is a very famous. I I never heard of the uh, written house name. So I'm not gonna get into some of the details. I, I wrote down a bunch of stuff, but I, I'm too tired tonight That's to right, go through all too. my fun facts. We're gonna do a quickie tonight. So just a little bit about the mash bill. This particular baby comes in at 51% rye. There you go. 35% corn and 14% barley. So, without further ado, let's get into some whiskey. Mm. Okay, so right off the bat, I can definitely smell the rye, um, but it's very sweet. Um, vanilla extract, caramel, um, graham crackers even for me. But then there's also like a darker, richer tobacco pipe. I put pipe tobacco, it reminded me of opening up my old little tiny humidor that I'd keep all my pipe tobacco in and, and, uh, and we need to start smoking it. pipes again. Not enough pipe smokers out there. Um, and then a uh, little oakiness too, uh, for yeah. me. Um, man, just a very, I mean, it's, it's something that you would want to smell <laughs> for, Further. for, uh, like a room spray. Man. I've only, so TH Handy, like part of the Buffalo Trace antique collection, you know, it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. It's like Pappy, yeah. George C. Stag. Um, my brother in law, uh, my brother -in -law, my cousin, um, Jonathan at Mead Mule, he gave me some, and it is amazing. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And this is the closest thing to TH Handy that I've had. Oh, wow. As far as a ride. And yeah. about, <laughs> and about, yeah, like a quarter that. of the cost, probably even less than that. I think that I got this for like 30 bucks. Wow. 20, no. Twenty five dollars, something like That's that. That's amazing. So be prepared. I got a lot of notes. All right, I'm ready for. Them. What do you got on the nose, Keith? Grape cola, mm. spearmint, wintergreen, grizz. Which normally I don't like because I had a bad experience in California at a party with someone Whoa. bored. Have I told this story on camera before? No, I don't think so. I was at this party in California. And there was you know styrofoam cups everywhere. I just got to the party and the guy was like, Keith. Have some Jack. So, so he poured it in, gave me that double shot. I think I have told this story, but anyway, so I'm gonna finish. He poured a double shot of Jack Daniels into another guy's wintergreen grizz spit cup. That was like this full of spit. Imagine a double shot of Jack on top of it and I just chugged the whole thing. So obviously, immediately just explosive, explosive throw up. And I'm not a big fan of wintergreen. <laughs> But this doesn't bug me. This actually, I used to like wintergreen. Oh, it that's a terrible back, story. Yeah, it just brings back a lot of memories. But this actually doesn't do that, and it's enjoyable. Mm. Fennel, hemp, nature. <laughs> that's why I come up here. <laughs> you and me, staring contest right now. Right now. Ro Robert Goulet, <laughs> Red Ships of Spain, <laughs> blub 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 thong thong. <laughs> if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go watch Will Fer the the greatest or the best <sighs> of Will Ferrell, please. <laughs> Bump it up, it up, thong thong. Thong thong. Okay, <laughs> chai like chai tea, spicy chai, caramel green apples. Just super spicy, cloves and cinnamon, honeysuckle, banana laffy taffy, which I get a lot with good quality rice. I don't know why, but that's just what I get. Leather saddle, 
pancakes and syrup. I'm not done yet. Not done yet. And just a lot, a lot of black pepper. Man, <clears throat> see, I didn't Ground get the- up black pepper. I didn't get any of the pepper until I actually drank it. Um, but now that I know like what I was smelling, definitely a lot the of that. black pepper? Yeah. Hmm. It's super spicy. Mm. Whoa. In a good way. Um, yeah, so for pepper for me, I, I wrote, like, you ever go to uh, Pizza Hut and they have the jars of the red pepper flakes? Yeah. The, those yeah, pepper yeah, flakes, yeah. that's what it reminded me of. Because we, we put those on our eggs and our... You much, do? Yeah. And you're, you guys put red pepper flakes on eggs? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the kids don't, but... The, I mean, you I, like it? Yeah. I'm married, I'm married to a Hispanic lady. <laughs> Who has blonde hair and is white as white can be. Hey, we... We put on, on the kids' uh, forms. <laughs> Got to be a minority, man. <laughs> Give up. Hmm. It actually kind of goes along with what the night's going to be today. Um, okay, so uh, so for on the uh, the taste for me, rye again. Um, then the the pepper that I was telling you about. Um, I don't know who makes it. My mom used to always have. I think it's Trident cinnamon red gum. It just reminded me of in church, the only gum my mom would have when I was a kid would be like Trident, like the little yeah. tiny rectangles. Did your parents, my parents, we grew up with, I mean, my dad, they both have college education. My dad went and got a master's, made money. But when we were younger, we were broke as a joke. My mom used to make us split like it. split half of gum. <laughs> like I remember just like when I finally came an adult, I'm like, whole I'm like chewing like three pieces, like screw this half piece crap. <laughs> Six feet of bubble tape or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, uh, as I'm sorry to interrupt, no. as I'm smelling this, and I didn't put this in my notes, I get a little bit of dill pickle, almost like like we got on the yeah. a, a midwinter yeah. night strand. Yeah, little pickle. Just juice a little in bit, there. just a little in the background, really slight. Apples, um, honey nut Cheerios for me, and then uh, once again those the the only peppery thing that I could get out with the pepper flakes. Mm -hmm. How about you, man? So a little bit of cola, like earthiness, mint leaves like in a mojito. Do you like mojitos? Mm. Oh man. I gotta our, be in the right mood for Our one. honeymoon, it, we had like the bracelets that got you unlimited drinks. Way too many mojitos. We had, we had our own uh, private pool out like I went for the honeymoon package or whatever and it was worth yeah, it. Yeah, you did. Did Hallie go for the honeymoon package? <laughs> <laughs> we went. We're not editing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, man, it was just mojitos all day, man. And it was like they would make fresh mint everything. It was good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be a good and you, you have to be probably, quality, quality liquor in it too. And you probably have to be in the tropics. Mm-hmm. To, it's not like in Ohio midwinter. <laughs> Mush in a mojito. Mojito. Um, Black licorice. Cloves, cinnamon, honeysuckle, a little bit of drying oak. <laughs> Grape Kool Aid. As the, as the great philosopher Dave Chappelle said, it's it's not juice, it's great drink. <laughs> great drink. No, great, what? what great drink. Yeah, it's great yeah. drink. Purple drink. No, great drink. Yeah. We don't get this stuff the white kids get with all those, the apple juice with all those nutrients. We get grape drink. Yeah, <laughs> so, we, didn't, we didn't get any of that either. We were like a water and milk family. <laughs> I remember in the summertime, my dad worked at, in South Charleston at a detasseling. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he just did that because he was a teacher yeah. for a summer job. Right. And literally every all day, every day for lunch and dinner, we had cube steak and corn because we got free corn yeah. and applesauce <laughs> for lunch and dinner. <laughs> That's Every hilarious. day. That's hilarious. I like corn, but I still have like flashbacks of like, like corn, uh, corn, too much corn. <laughs> so grape Kool Aid, fennel, aniseed. Leather saddle and <laughs> get buttered corn. <laughs> um, maraschino cherries. I forgot that I had that in my notes. 
There is like a butteriness to it. Yeah. On the palate, not on the not on the nose. Whenever we're doing these reviews, I I always, as Keith is talking about them, especially after you've had some time to experience a bottle, I definitely it just clicks in my head as far as oh that's that flavor that's that flavor or what I, or what I'm experiencing along with it. Yep. Pancakes and syrup. Creamy caramel, creamy and spicy hot chai, little red pepper flakes, a little bit of corn syrup in the background. You copied off my notes? I am. <laughs> um, fairly short finish for me. Um, some of it sticks around. Um, mm -mm -mm. Rye and cinnamon. Probably most of the peppery uh, feeling stays with my, it, and it, it's more of a physical feel for me that stays, not necessarily the the taste as much. Mm -hmm. So pretty good for me, it is a medium to long finish. And you know, a lot of the like laffy taffy, banana laffy taffy, the corn syrup, the I'm trying to think, the leather saddle, those type of notes. They kind of go away quickly, but that spicy chai, clove, cinnamon, mm -hmm. black pepper, that, that stays around yeah. for a while for me. Yeah. So. Maybe that's what I feel is like wrapping around my tongue. Malted Man Cave Mark, what are you going to give this? It's a 85. <laughs> what? Really? I'm surprised. I guess it's a rye. What? No, you it, thought I would have rated it higher? In my mind, I was thinking bottled and bo bottled and bond. Um, it's it's American, but it's not bourbon. It's rye, so it's not my favorite thing. Yeah, yeah, it's just not my favorite. It's not my favorite palette. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I realistically, this is probably like when you compare it to Scotch and bourbon or anything else that I've had. It's probably like an eighty seven, eighty eight. But the fact that it's so good for only like twenty six dollars makes me want to give it like a ninety or something. Yeah, but I would say. 87. 87. 87 out of 100. Yeah, really it's very good. Amazing. If you see Rittenhouse Rye, snatch it up. I don't care who you are, what your palate is, it's worth having. It, it's a classic, like iconic rye whiskey that you know everyone needs to have at their bar, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, glad I had question it. of the night. A little controversial this evening. Um, Keith just had me watch a video. So, we wanted to talk a little bit about and get kind of our opinions on... The whole Ser Serena. What, what happened at the U.S. Open? The Serena Williams debacle. <laughs> so I want to make it very clear that I think Serena Williams is the greatest of all time. I think she's very pretty. I think normally she's a very likable person. You know, I don't have anything against her. I, I really, I've looked at her in a positive light for as long as I've known as Serena Williams. Yeah. Um, but I actually and it's. I think her trying to make this into like a woman's right thing or like a gender or, or a race thing is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I think that the rule is stupid. If you if you know anything about the situation, at first she was kind of accused of like taking coaching from her coach, um, which she denied, and that kind of escalated. And I think she was kind of getting beat, and so she was frustrated, and it kind of turned basically, in my opinion. And we've all done this, and I'm not even trying to say that I've never had a temper tantrum or been competitive or a sore loser. But for a counselor who sees a lot of kids who struggle with frustration tolerance, who like quit really easy, who always have to be first, or it's just, it seemed like Serena had a temper tantrum, and now she's trying to play the, the race gender card, and I just, I don't think that's okay. Yeah. And I still think she's the greatest of all time. This is nothing against her. I just don't necessarily think, because I see people saying that this judge is like the sexist chauvinist. And I'm, he was, you know, everyone has said he did everything by the book. He was composed while she was like yelling at him. Yeah, he just gave had, her oh, so multiple warnings. Like, yeah. yeah, she's breaking a racket. I just don't think as great as she is, I just would like to see the greatest tennis player of all time to just be a little bit better role model to the kids. And, yes. and she may have been the best role model for her whole career up until now. You know, so I don't follow tennis way. a whole I lot. Say we, I say we put it this way. She has valid points that she made, but they are not valid in regards to her argument. Correct. She has valid points about, yeah, 
men. Maybe they do get away with more. Yeah, I, I mean, of course. But two rights don't make a wrong. Just because right, they're right, getting right. away from it doesn't mean that so, you should. <laughs> so, but that's regardless of the fact that she she should have just honored what the ref. I mean, how many times you and I have played a lot of sports over the years? How many times has arguing with oh the ref gosh. helped? It never works out. How, when, when have they ever changed the call? Yep. And you know, I know. If I, not, if yeah. I made the statement to you that I think that one of the reasons, well, I know you think LeBron has passed Michael Jordan. <laughs> one of my opinions, one of the reasons that he'll never be yeah, quite as good is because, well, and I feel bad for LeBron because he's so big. It's like the Shaq thing. It, it doesn't look like he's getting fouled. So he gets murdered. But then very early on, he started complaining to the refs, and then he got a bad reputation for kind of complaining. And it's just human nature as a ref. You're like, this dude's a douchebag. He keeps, like, getting in my face, yelling at me. So, no, if it's a 50-50 call, yeah, it's not going it's, your way. Yeah. And I think that that has hurt LeBron's career. So, same thing. It's like, Serena, even if you think that you're being mistreated, you know, finish the game and then file a complaint. You know, take yeah. your complaint to the media. To use your clout to get and, it. It just kind of seemed like she was, I'm Serena Williams. I'm above this. I can, like, guilt this guy into, like, you will apologize to me. Like, yeah. Come on. Yeah. She was, um... <laughs> Yeah, there shouldn't be a, there should not be, really it should go away really quick as far as she should just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even apologize for the way that she acted, but that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So the best <laughs> Everyone's thing Everyone's wanting him to apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should just drop it or, I mean, what are they, they want this guy to lose his job? Is that what she really wants? I, I don't know. I don't know, but. Because they're... she's going to look really silly as she, if she's watched the video. And she knows yeah, yeah, yeah. when she's sitting on the the, be the bench in between and she's chirping at the judge and then she says well stop talking to me then stop talking to me <laughs> and then the guy's like I'm not talking to you but, but he's just sitting there and she goes back to whatever and then she looks back and she's like how dare you <laughs> and I'm like girl you crazy right now you <laughs> Uh, you got, you got, uh, you... And, and I want to say, very, I'm sure there's times if I was as big as she has, like I'd be, I'd be tempted to throw, I'm Serena Williams. You shut, you're never coat, you're never being a ref yeah, here yeah, again. Yeah. I'm not a thief, whatever. Let's just say the rule needs to be changed. Why, why can't you coach? Yeah. <laughs> like, why can't they so, have signals? But either way, a rule is a rule. My rule is, or my, my view is Serena, um, a temper tantrum is probably a good, but well, you know what? I don't that it. She did have it. She did act like a little child, but I don't want to negate from the emotions that lots of women do feel as far as um, the difference in the way that maybe a a female ref would react to a male player. Yeah. In, 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 and how they there, there, there's very possible there's a discrepancy so so I don't want to take away from that but she she that's the wrong arena to fight that fight in when yeah. you're wrong when 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 your whole your whole groundwork is is wrong your Serena was wrong she was what was wrong. really sad is that like it completely took away the whole moment like the, the so when the other lady won I know. the whole crowd was booing her I know when she was getting the presentation that was terrible and like she even said like Serena's like my idol yeah <laughs> and the, like it just kind of seemed like you're making this about you and it should be yeah about the other it person. was so all that to say. And this has nothing to do, like, I believe in women's rights. I want my daughter to get equal play. If she wants to, like, work her way up the ladder anywhere, I want her to be able yeah. to go up to the top. Yeah. But I just don't think her making this, like, a gender card is accurate. I think no. you're trying to use that to make up for a temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah. Love yeah, you, Serena Williams. The, yeah. You're the greatest of all time. You're beautiful. She is the greatest but of all time. Yeah, it, we all have our down moments, and I think this was one for you. <laughs> yes, this all is right. a down, down. Multi man cave approved. Rittenhouse Rye. Um, thank you guys as always. Give for it. Uh, I give it eighty five <laughs> Serenas out of a hundred. <laughs> Apparently, Dave does not a big fan of Rye's, but if you like Rye's, I would advise you to go pick this it's, up. It's pretty good for a Rye. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, Slancha.